Cohen, I've been receiving questions from a few people these days about what roll pinning is or what turn of cloth is. Apparently this is um, becoming a more popular subject in amateur corset making these days. So I'm going to quickly give you uh, an example and a really short tutorial on what roll pinning or what turn of cloth is, where you can actually use it in terms of your corset making and how it can help. So let's go. So why roll pin? When you're making clothing, you're essentially taking a 2D object, which is fabric, and giving it 3D form over a body. However, when you deal with multiple layers, this poses a problem. First, let's look at two circles. The circumference of a circle is pi times the diameter, so a smaller circle will have a shorter circumference than a larger circle will. Think of dancing as an analogy. If you have a dancing couple that are walking in a circle, the person on the outside will have to take larger steps and travel a longer distance than the person on the inside, and this way the two dancers stay side by side. So looking at this at another angle, two circles of different sizes cannot have the same circumference. Sometimes though, in sewing, we try to force it that way. You can take two pieces of fabric with identical width, and it will be fine when laying flat. However, when you lay it around a curve or a bend, the inner fabric will arc over a smaller circumference than the outer fabric. If the two layers aren't anchored together, that means that the layers will shift and the inner layer will have traveled a further arc than the outer fabric. But when you force the two layers together, as in sewing seams on either side, one of two things will happen. One, if the outer fabric is stronger, then the inner fabric will have too large a circumference for a circle of its size, and this causes the lining to buckle. You'll see this as vertical wrinkling inside of a corset. Two, if the inner fabric is stronger, then the outer fabric will have too small a circumference for a circle of its size, and it will be forced to stretch. This may result in pulling away at the seams, or tension lines and wrinkles forming horizontally across the corset. This is one corset I made, which I call the wrinkly pig. In this corset, I flatlined all my layers together on a flat surface instead of roll pinning. It resulted in a beautiful corset while it was laying flat, but when I put it on, it caused the outer brocade to stretch and form all the stress wrinkles you see here. An interesting thing to note here is how the front panels, which are mostly flat on my body, those don't wrinkle, and the side panels, which curve the most, also wrinkle the most. Now, this is my tickled pink corset that you might be familiar with, and it's made from the exact same brocade, except with some roll pinning on the side panels. Now, there are other factors involved here, like external boning channels, clipping curves, and using fusibles, which often help against wrinkles. But you can see that, although it's not completely smooth, it's much better than before. That's the difference roll pinning can make. So what can you use for roll pinning? Well, a lot of people use a tailor's ham. However, if you don't have a tailor's ham, you can basically use whatever you have on hand in your house. So you can use um, old jars or even soup cans like this, and you can basically lay your fabric down like that and then pin it. Um, same with large bottles like this. You can just lay it down like that and pin it around like so. And if you have a dress form, then this is actually probably one of the best things that you could use for roll pinning. Um, all you have to do is take whatever panel you're going to be working on. This is my third panel here. So it's actually going to sit approximately here on the body when it's done, um, about the, the outer edge of the bust here. And you can pin it to the dress form in a couple different places. And then you can go ahead and roll pin it directly on the dress form so that when it's done, you're actually going to have um, sort of a more advanced form of roll pinning in that um, it's not only going to curve around in a horizontal axis, but it's also going to curve in a vertical axis as well. So you're going to get really beautiful, smooth panels all the way around the body in both axes. Now, if you don't have any of those other things on hand, then don't panic because you can just use parts of your body. So if you're going around a gentle curve, then you can use your thigh. If you are working on an extremely petite person, you can use something um, more like your calf here. So I'm going to show you how to um, roll pin in detail. So here I have my lower layer, which is cutie, and I don't know if you can see that I have the waistline marked out there. And that is so when I put on the upper layer of black twill, I also have those um, the waistline marked out and I can match those lines up together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pin 
at this waistline so that it doesn't shift while I'm roll penning it. And while you're penning, you just want to try and shift the panels as little as possible while you're actually putting the pin in because if you pick it up like that that just ruins the contour of it and then you just lose the whole point of roll pinning in the first place so just try to do that and also try not to stab yourself in the leg it's not absolutely necessary to pin directly on the stitch line especially if you're going to be transferring the pins from the fashion side to the couture side when you go to sew your seams together when you're roll pinning each panel, try to take into account which panel it is you're rolling. A side panel might need more curve than a front or a back panel. Also consider who the corset is for. If you're making this for a person with a very small waist, consider roll pinning over something with a smaller circumference than you would if you were making a corset, say, for a more full-figured person. How delicate the fabrics are, as well as how many layers you're dealing with, may also play a role in how much you roll pin. Since there are millions of different combinations of fabrics that can be used in corsetry, there aren't a lot of hard rules on roll pinning, so the best teacher here is experience. And here you can see the panel that's uh, finished its roll pinning, and you can see that the lower layer of the couture is peeking out a little bit from underneath the twill layer, and um, you understand why because of the diagram that I had showed you earlier on. So now that you're done roll pinning, you may notice a few millimeters difference between the fashion seam line and the couture seam line. A few millimeters might not make much of a difference on one panel, but when you're dealing with 10, 12, 14 panels or more in a corset, this can sometimes add up to an inch or more difference in the completed corset. So when assembling your corset, which seam line should you follow? Well, let's say that you drafted your corset to have a 24 inch waist and you traced the pattern exactly the same on the fashion and couture layers. If you follow the couture seams, then the inner circumference of the corset will be about 24 inches, while the fashion layer, which is slightly bigger, will give a bigger circumference outside of the corset. This is the case for many, if not most, corsets out there, as most seams are sewn right sides together, so it's easier to follow the lines traced on couture for most seamstresses. If, however, you use the fashion fabric stitch lines, this will mean that the outside measurement will be about 24 inches and the inner couture may be smaller than that. However, this is only before adding bones, grommets, and other things that may add bulk to the corset. And it's of course neglecting the fact that a corset may stretch during the seasoning process. So I hope this answered many of your questions concerning roll pinning or turn of cloth. I encourage all of you to try it at least a few times. As with any skill, practice makes perfect. So if it doesn't work out for you the first time, then feel free to experiment with it again. And if you did like this video, if you found it helpful, then please click the button to support the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.